get ready? You guys ready? ready? You guys ready? Uh, I'm, I'm ready to get uh, ready. Come on. Let's go. Let's get this off. Oh, this guy. Uh, 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 the old Paul Huckabee. Showcase. I was one of the biggest parts of the biggest show. You guys Showcase yeah. has had all year. Keep our hands to ourselves this time. Yeah, we can cut the tension with a knife. Them. We're sanitizing you. COVID's still going on. We combated it. We didn't win it. That is true. Very true. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Showcase TV. I'm here with the Showcase recap. Yours truly, Jay Hollywood, TJ Alvin, Jared Polino, in the All Paul Holloway. Guys, welcome. Glad to be here. Great. TJ, you how you been? I've been good, man. How you good. been there, man? Yeah. So, guys, Excited. just came off COVID Combat. COVID Combat had a big, big card. We have some new champs. Champs is still yeah. is showcase heavyweight yeah. champion. Yeah. We're going to go right into that. We had the diabolical Scott Ladur against Vega, the SPW champion. What do you think about that match? I thought it was a really good match, uh, especially going for Scott. I think it was really well put. That match was all over the place. But when it came down to it, Vega came out with the W, so props to Vega for coming out as still the Showcase Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. Cool, but Paul, I mean, agree or disagree, I mean. Oh, of course. I know we disagreed a lot in the past, but I'm a changed man. Two victories under my belt. We came off a great show, and that main event, that was something else. I, I'm, I feel bad for Vega to have to deal with, you know, probably Frank's incompetence and, and Scott's Whatever you want to call it, that was some nut. That was that was nuts. I don't know how other to put it, but that was crazy. But the fact that Vega came out with no scars and still the SPW Heavyweight Champion, all the props in the world too. Yeah, you know, Jared, you were sitting ringside, but you wasn't ringside for that match in particular. But we all seen the match. You know, what you, what is your opinion? I mean, I think you know, I think both, I think both contenders did a great job. You know, Vega did a great job and. In, 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 in holding his own. Vega did a great job in holding his own. And Scott, valiant effort from Scott. But unfortunately, he couldn't pull through with the victory. And still, we have the same retaining showcase pro wrestling heavyweight champion, Vega. I, you know, hats off to those two. And, yeah. you know, hopefully we see, hopefully we see some, 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 some great things coming forward from the both of them. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I can see a round two happening between that, those two guys. You know, Scott had the home, basically home court advantage. And, uh, they played in his world, and Vega still is a showcase pro wrestling heavyweight champion. But Paul, two wins. Oh, you yeah. just said it. You know it. You beat the rising star, the premier, Louis Leon. The only rising star in showcase is the one who's standing under the brightest light, and that is me, the old Paul Holloway. Louis Leon couldn't handle the heat that I brought under my spotlight. He stepped in, and he failed, just like Caribbean Kid and just like whoever else decides to step up. I mean, I might have a guy that disagrees. TJ. Might? Oh. No comment. No comment, okay. No comment. Jared, I mean, Paul's sitting here. What do you think? But what do you thought about the match? You sat ringside. You've seen it all. I don't take things personally. It's okay. I, I mean, what? I mean, another another great match from two young stars, two rising young stars. And it's just, it's it's great to see two people at the at the height of their element, at the at, at possibly the peak, possibly the peak and and the starting peak of their career, just to battle battle it out and go toe to toe, and and, and of course the best man stands on top, which yeah. happened to be the all ball. The all ball. Well, you say it right, right. We're at the pinnacle right now of our career right now. We're young, yep. we're hungry, and we're confident. But the big thing going out of it was the progression that we've made in one year. I mean, look where we both ended up. We both ended up co-main eventing, so to speak. Yep. One of the biggest shows. A sub-main event. That's big. Couldn't get any bigger with... Yeah, it was, it was a year in the making, you guys. Absolutely. Made your debut. Then, a year later, you come back one-on-one. -on -one. It was a big match. But talk about big matches. We had season three, The Road to the Gold, where you had your two finalists. Big Matt Thompson, Carlos Slavin. Went no contest as a knockdown Frank Rocha. He's always in some type of mix, guys. So, Poor Frank. no contest. The boss black card comes out, makes a big triple threat for COVID combat. Then it was a singles competition. I don't know what happened to Mr. Pickles. H33 walked out with the belt, the mask, the whole nine. But we have a new Sons of Liberty champion, 
big Matt Thompson. Paul, what do you think? Say what you want about HD3. He said he took down the clown, and he did metaphorically and physically by taking his championship. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what happened. I don't want to know what happened. Anytime I get near pickles, it's not a comfortable situation. Yeah. So I can only imagine what HD3 had to go through to make sure that that man or entity or whatever the hell he is didn't show up. Yeah. I mean, he said it weeks and weeks before he was going to take the belt. And he sure took the belt. <laughs> yeah. TJ. I called it from before, like what we called on our recap show yep. a while back. I said Big Matt was going to find a way to win that title. And for Big Matt to come out and win, even though it wasn't a triple threat match with Mr. Pickles out of the out of the picture, mm -hmm. I, at the end of the day, he won that match. He won it in a dominant fashion, even with HD3 by his side. And like, I'll agree with Paul. Paul I'll agree with him for once on something. HD3 oh, had a plan to take out Mr. Pickles, and he did. Yeah. And we saw it from the beginning. I was shocked to actually see him at the show. So, yeah. I mean, Big Matt won, but. Carlos Slavin, you know, he gets cheated out of a match again. I mean, Vega, Blackheart, once again comes into the mix and and he gets involved and down goes Carlos Slavin. Do you think Carlos Slavin got screwed? I would absolutely say that Carlos Slavin did get screwed. And 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 one of the main things that you always have to you gotta you gotta keep eyes in the back of your head. And that's what Carlos Slavin failed to do, so to speak. You know, he 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 wasn't aware of his surroundings and didn't know. And, and 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 thought that said you know any 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 to any type of animosity towards any type of animosity towards him the boss mm -hmm. and Vega you know he he most likely thought that was over he was focused on winning a championship but he should have been focused outside of the ring in in, in making sure that he's covered in all grounds yeah and he did I mean, yeah. say what you want though say what you want but that match was still a triple threat triple threat rules no disqualification you can say what you want. But at the end of the night, touche. Took the words right out of my mouth. Referee's discretion. Took the words right Unfortunately, out. I don't think the referee even saw it. Even if he did, yeah, yeah. there's he, nothing he could do. You got to know your surroundings. True. I mean, Carlos Slavin keeps going through that. You know, he's right there to claim basically the big prize, and he keeps failing, and he has to pay attention. Um, but that goes into our next match. We have the return of Apocalypse. He got suspended for 30 days to hit Frank Rocha with a chair. <sighs> Once again, Frank Rocha is always in some type of problem, but <laughs> that's why we created the GoFundMe. Yeah, that's I mean, why we created the GoFundMe for that, Frank. That's I mean that's it. He comes out, Frank gets scared, he rings the bell again, and Caribbean kid, you know, poor kid, but you know he gets he gets the beat up of yeah. that night. I mean, kid, he yeah. put up a good effort. He, yeah, he, he dropped he got a few shots good. in. He knocked him down for you know a couple seconds. But, yeah, you know, yeah. He, he still got something. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's better yeah. than nothing, even though he got his ass handed to him. Yeah. Could have yeah. been worse. Could have been worse. Exactly. Oh, been. But that, I mean, we had a, like a great, great card. Uh, but we have new tag team champions. That's huge. Two, like, That's a pyramids team. of power came out. It didn't matter what, what happened. They won the belts. They beat them twice. And now they're the new champions. What do you think about that match? I, I mean, we've had champs since March anniversary. Yep. Pretty much. I mean, two of our staples of our of our company have been the tag team championships and the heavyweight championships long before the Sons of Liberty championship came around. And, and to hold that title and hold it for well over a year, that's insane. But it's a testament to Pyramids of Power to come in and beat the most dominant tag team that we've had probably ever in, in such convincing fashion. Yeah. TJ. Pyramids of Power are the new kids on the block, and they are the new tag team champions. They knocked them off before at Autumn Annihilation, and they knocked them off again at COVID Combat. For them to come in and dominate those two, those two top singles wrestlers that are the tag team champ, were the tag team champions. Yep. Sorry, my apologies on that. Former tag team champions. At the end of the day, for them, that's a big totem pole. Like they just set the bar higher yeah. at that point. They set the bar a lot higher for those tag team titles, and I hope to see. A more dominant tag team division with them as tag team champions versus the big nasty dogs. Yeah, I agree. You know, the tag division, we got new champions and a lot of dudes, you know, in, the, in our singles division. So let's start teaming up. I think I think that's what's going to happen. You know, new kids on the block, like you said, challenges are going to come. And we're going to see that come in season four. Uh, Jerry, you sat ringside for that. You know, the referee wasn't the referee. It was their manager that came into the ring 
and uh, he counted one, two, three, but it wasn't over. At that point, what he was thinking? I, 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 for the, the 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 first initial thought in my mind was, where did he come from? I, 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 I truly did not see where he made the change and came in and did that little sleaze ball move that he did. But you know, it was it it, it, it was it was an amazing distraction. It definitely was an amazing distraction of of of, of what they did. And now new champions. I, I you know. Just, just a match alone with 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 four men, powerful men, strong. You know, battle of Goliath, Goliath, and Goliath, and Goliath. If you want to put it in better terms, yeah. it's just no other words. To no put other it. words. Yeah. He's lost the words. Yeah. He's lost the words. It's Everyone's a finding a way to win. Yeah. Everyone, Everyone found, a way. found a way to win. True. Yeah. When they when they really put their mind to it, yep. it's just like yeah. it's like beating COVID. Yeah, you, know, all it is. you put your mind to it, you find a way to beat it. COVID combat. Oh, That's yeah. all it is. It's all it was. But we had a great card with COVID combat, and we're going into our season four of Showcase TV, where, you know, everything's about our rankings, right? Yeah. You climb our rankings, you get chances. People are watching, right? We have the boss, Chris Blackheart. We have the commissioner, Cena. That they're watching, and they know what's going on. Oh, he's like but, the all-seeing eye. Yeah. Uh, he show, he, you never know when he's going to show up. Yeah. Exactly. He can sign a match tomorrow. You, you just don't know. But we're going to go right into these rankings, and we're going to go right into our singles division. And still, our SPW heavyweight champion, Vega, at 4-0. Number one, TJ Alvin. He finds a way to win. He finds a way to win no matter what. The challenges that he's faced since coming in to the newer season or this new structure that we've had for Showcase with the rankings has been very different. And for Vega to be 4-0 and still be the heavyweight champion, is just crazy. And not only that, on top of that, he's held the title for more than a year now. Yeah. Now that we're looking at it. Had the celebration, what happened with that, mm -hmm. going into that COVID combat match. But like I said, he always finds a way to win as a dominant champion. He's the veteran that I've known and seen him to be. Cool. I mean, Jared, Showcase TV, number one rank. This is your first time on our show, but what what is you know what is your opinion about that? I mean, I've seen I've I I've, I've seen I've seen Vega do do a whole lot, you know, within his with, within his career. Um, back when you know the Don moniker, you know the Don Vega moniker, when he you know dropped the Don and became Vega, I think that's when it all changed from there. I've never seen a more laser focused individual just focused and 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 hungry on retaining his championship he, he, he retaining his unblemished record and he's and, and and I feel he's going to make sure that he goes going forward and doesn't allow anyone to get in his way or take anything from him it's going to take a hell of a whole lot and it's going to take one hell of a competitor to take him from the top spot I agree absolutely um but that goes right into our second ranked competitor Paul the new Sun Delivery champion, oh, yeah. five and zero oh and two. You know he had a couple draws, double count out. Uh, Big Matt Thompson with HD three number two. What do it you think? It was a rocky start for him in Showcase. Back in March, anniversary got eliminated in the Battle Royal, the Gauntlet for the Gold by our former Sons of Liberty champion Sean Candido. His first match here in Showcase TV, double count out with yep. Sean Candido. He came back. Him and Apocalypse. Tore the house down, beat the hell out of each other to a double DQ. DQ yeah, you know, and it was a rocky start for him. He, it was a lot of draws, like you said, but it was the road to the gold. Yeah, it was a rocky road, and he found his way through it. Yeah, and sometimes losing, it takes the right person to. It takes finding the right person by your side to win, to motivate you to win. Yep, good and that's what HD three was for him. HG3 has managed champions. One of our former heavyweight champions, he's managed. Our new Sons of Liberty champion, maybe it's HG3, maybe it's Big Matt Thompson, maybe it's both. Yep. Yeah, good coach. You know, that's all it is. He's a good coach and he's there and he does whatever it takes for his, basically his player yep. to win. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Showcase Recap here. My name is Jay Hollywood. But right before we get went on break, TJ Alvin, you know, we was talking about the rank two number competitor. You know, number two, the Sun Delivery Champion, Big Matt Thompson. You know, what do you think about that? Look, I've called it before and I'll say it again. Big Matt Thompson is a dominant force in Showcase Pro Wrestling. I said it when in the gauntlet for the gold, not the gauntlet for the gold, the road to the gold. Yep. He's been 
very dominant since coming back to Showcase Pro Wrestling and being with Showcase Pro Wrestling. Those two matches against Apocalypse that tore the house down, Paul said, which I'm going to agree with again on those. Those were two great contests. Chaos and Earthquakes. <laughs> very true. So for Big Matt to be where he's at with HD3, at, at the coaching position for him, I'll call him the coaching position, who knows how long that, that's going to last. Yeah. Like, who knows how long that reign's going to last. It could last a long while because he's yeah. been a very dominant for HD3, he's been a very dominant manager, managing champions. Yeah, so. I agree. You know, you know, Big Matt Thompson, he didn't have no easy slate. You know, he yeah. fought Carlos Slavin twice. Yeah. You know, he fought Apocalypse twice. Yeah. He fought, uh, you know, the, the the comeback of Nick Diamond, a new attitude. A he he fought, you know, Sean Candido, former champion. Yep. He's been fighting top competitors here on Showcase. Absolutely. And he just keeps winning. So right now he sits at five and zero oh and two. Uh, yeah, obviously two draws, but it is what it is. He's still the champ, all right? And season four, we've just got to see what he's going to do with it. But him. those draws, it, it shows that he's either winning or they can't beat him. They can't beat him, Trump. exactly. That is, I, 100%. All right, but going to number three in our rankings, he actually moved down from our number two spot at six and one. The mysterious, really mysterious, you don't even know where he's at now. Mr. Pickles sits at six and one. Paul. Like you said, we don't know where he is. Yeah, I mean, we still have yet to find out, yet to get word from HD3 himself, yep. the man who claims he's the mastermind behind taking Pickles out, yep. taking the title off of him. You never know what could happen. It's the same with Apocalypse. When Apocalypse went out, we didn't know when he was going to come back. And he showed up and made an impact. Yeah. That could very well happen with Mr. Pickles. Both are similar entities, you know, similar style, big, brutal, and enigmatic. We have no idea what's going to happen. He had a dominant reign, beat a lot of people, but it took being taken out to get the belt yeah. off. I mean, he had a good run. He didn't physically lose, but he lost. He lost. You know I mean? He yep. lost something that he won. Still sanctioned as a triple threat yeah. match. He didn't, mean, you know, he didn't win. When you didn't see Mr. Pickles come out, I mean, what was going through your mind? I, you know, I'm not, I, by all means, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or yeah. anything, but when I saw AC3 walk out with the Mr. Pickles mask, and saying he killed Pickles, did whatever. Could that have been his plan all along? Was he really, could he really have been Mr. Pick? Uh, I'm, I'm not entitled, or hired somebody, yeah. somebody that he knows to be Mr. Pickles, to hold that crown, to hold it for Big Matt Thompson? I, I'm not sure, I was a little confused, but like you guys are saying. I mean, that's a good valid point. I mean, he did distract. Sean Candido and when Mr. Pickles won the belt. It could have been a plan all along. All along. You you know, it could have been the dots connect together yeah. too perfectly. Yeah. We won't know until we know. I mean if we ever do know. Yeah, we if we do know exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um but Some we're things are left to be, you know, unfigured out. Yeah. For now he's not the mysterious, he's the MIA. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That's yeah. it. That's it. Exactly. So we find out what happened to Mr. Pickles. You'll yeah. know what we'll, we know. Yeah. That's, that's it. But we go into our four ranked competitor. In Carlos Slavin at four and two. That's a big loss. He's two losses in to Big Matt Thompson, uh, both coming due to the fact Vega and Blackheart always has something to do with it. But, like he said, eyes behind your head, TJ. I'm gonna tell you, Carlos is shit out of luck. If you wanna be truthful with you, sorry to cuss, but he's just shit out of luck on that one. He's just very unlucky with that. Going into that triple threat match, yeah. He thought it was going into a triple threat match. But at the end of the night, was he the one that walked out champion? No. no. And that's why he's ranked where he is, and that's why Big Matt is ranked where he is. He's a great competitor, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again. He's a top star for Showcase for Wrestling. But where he's at in the rankings, where he should be at, he doesn't speak. No. It's very different. Yeah, I mean, four and two is a decent record. But for, for what it is, you know, he's he has to be aware of his surroundings. He knows there's people out there that's trying to get him. But he got to pay attention. Well, he's a veteran. Yeah. Right? He's been in here long enough to know that anything can happen. You know, and that's just in life itself, too. Yeah. Anything can happen. You always got to have one eye looking over your shoulder at all times. This, you can't trust anybody in this business. All right? And the fact that he decided to trust Blackheart and Blackheart betrayed him. Yep. It, you know, he, he just, he's not smart. He's, he really isn't. I mean, he's been climbing up this ladder. And then falling down. Yep. And then climbing back up and falling down. It, it's something's gotta give here. Yeah. If I can if, if, if yeah. I can if I can just add to that, um, 
you know, I've, I've known Carlos for a, a, an extraordinary amount of time. And, you know, I knew him back when he, you know, back in 2016, when, when he, you know, when he, when he was a rookie back in 2016 and he won rookie of the year and everything like that. And he had a really promising future. And, you know, to see how he's gone through all these changes, I still think that Carlos is looking, is still trying to find himself. And I, I, I just personally think if he doesn't, if he doesn't grasp onto that soon, it'll, you know, it'll definitely take him down the rankings and who knows where it'll put him at, where it'll put him at that point. You know, he's, he's got, he's got to get focused. He has to, he has to pay attention. He just has to make sure that, you know, he can, he can do it. He can do what he needs to do to yep. end up on top. It yeah. seems like every time we, we come and do these recaps, he's going further and further down. Yeah. He started up at number two, number one contender. Mm -hmm. Now look where he's at. He dropped from four. Yep. So, I mean, any sport, it's a mental game, right? It's 95% mental, 5% physical action. Yeah. And that's where he's slacking at, is the mental. Uh, but talk about mental and crazy and scary. Oh, my God. Our fifth-ranked competitor oh, yeah. at 3-1-1 <laughs> one, is, one, is Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. Apocalypse got suspended. He hit Frank Rocha with a chair in frustration. The front office suspended him for 30 days. And he made his return at COVID Combat. And for what I heard, he's dominant. He's gonna dominate. He wants everybody on the roster, one by one, all the way down. Yeah, I got it. And I mean, TJ, what do you think about that? He's going through everybody, brother. He's going through everybody. Also, just wanted to add Frank Roach's uh, GoFundMe. Check it out. Um, <laughs> thanks to Apocalypse, now we have that. Yeah. So. But for Apocalypse, he's, he's got a wife and kids. All right, he's got to provide stuff. He's got yeah. kids, like he's got kids. But, <laughs> but for Apocalypse to be where he's at, being back from suspension and being dominant as he is, I can't see like I see a brighter future for him than anybody on this on this rankings. Yeah, you know, yeah. for him to be where he is coming back from that, we're in for trouble. Dude. We're in for a lot of trouble. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you you look at the new Suns delivery champion. Yes, we've seen that that battle before. But if he goes through this 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 whole rankings, oh, I'm God. telling you now, there's gonna be a championship match really really soon. I mean, there's soon. still a score to settle though. Yeah, there I is. mean, Apocalypse definitely has some unfinished business. Yeah. Clearly, you know, he didn't get the outcome he wanted, no. and then he took out his frustration on the first person he saw. Yeah, and that first person just so happened to be Frank. I feel sorry for the guy. Yeah. But he should have left. Yeah, right? Remember the GoFundMe. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you can't forget. Go but I mean, and Frank's been around here long enough to know that we have a lot of guys who a little short tempered. You know, yeah, when yeah. it is this, this business, it's cutthroat. When you don't get what you want, you get mad. Yeah, you get angry. In Apocalypse, he's he's on a tidal wave of of, of a journey. Yeah, to get back to where he wants to be, and I believe that's going to be bad. Yeah, season awesome. season four. I can see him dominating as we've seen Mr. Pickles dominate Absolutely. season two and season three. But season four, I think is the season of Apocalypse. He, I think this is where he, he shines, puts that stamp on everything. Yep. Uh, but we're going to keep going forward. And our sixth ranked competitor is the flawless Nick Diamond at two and one. Yep. He wasn't on the card for COVID combat, but he's still the flawless one. I mean, it's unfortunate, right? One man's loss is another man's game, but he... Listen, I know a lot of people have made some comparisons to me and him and the way that we carry ourselves. He's a great guy. In and out of the ring. But he's got talent. Yeah. He he beat Nicole Matala twice. All right? She didn't think he won the fair the first time. He proved to her that he could do it a second. It, I mean, I can agree to disagree. I mean, when he got a real challenger in Big Matt Thompson in the road to the goal, they fall in the semifinals. He lost, right? He finally had a real challenger in front of him, and he lost. I mean, we haven't seen him come back and prove himself, but I think in season four we can see that happen. What do you think? Actually, let me ask you a question. Do you think that loss against Big Matt was a reality check for Nick Diamond? I believe so, yes. Think so? Yes. I think, like, the reason I ask is because you had Nicole Matalo in two great matches, two big matches yep. for him being back. And not only that, for Nicole Matala, Makuna Matata, whatever he wants to call her. Yep. Again, no words on that. But for <laughs> for Nick to be where he's at, ranked six, versus Nicole Matala, I don't even think she's on these rankings. You yeah. know? He's been back, she's been back, but here's the difference is that he's climbing the rankings. She's climbing down the rankings. Yeah. So for Nick, like I say about any of these guys, it's any given day for any of these guys to climb up and take a shot at anybody. 
So for Nick to be at six, who knows? By next time we talk, he might be at four. He might be at three. Yeah. I don't know about one, but maybe like between three, maybe four. Four. Yeah. I Hopefully mean, we don't see pickles. We don't see Carlos come back and do something. Yeah, exactly. Nick might have an easy chance to just decline. Exactly. But uh, he, he got to come back and redeem himself. Uh, but we go into our seventh rate competitor, Jared, the Scott, the diabolical Scott Ladur. He sits at three and three. He's 50 50. He's right at 500. A lot of people disappearing. Yeah. I mean, he's. Yeah, he's How's everybody three. going? He's even, right? Easy three and three. You know, the champ had his celebration. His Dow got in the way. The champ stepped up, took the challenge on his terms, and he failed. I don't think he, you can say fail. He disappeared. I mean, he just vanished from wherever he was. I mean, it's a mind game. Like I said, it's mental. But what do you think? At seven, at three and three, what do you think? At three and three, number seven, the only thing that I have to say is Scott, I, I, I believe Scott needs to get a little bit more focus. A little bit more focus. And, and I can I can definitely tell it's a little hard for him to get focused because you never really know what's going on in the mind yeah. of Scott Ladurne. <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and I wanna know. <laughs> I don't think most of us do. But you, 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 you just he he answers to a doll. He answers to a mask. Um, to a doll and you know every everything goes through his whole energy his life force yeah. what he believes is through the doll which you know who's to say I, you know, I, I don't talk to dolls I don't yeah, talk yeah. to masks <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure if you, you know it, 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 if it's true or not but Scott definitely needs to get a little bit more laser focused and actually focus on just climbing the rankings climb just the, yeah. cl climb, climb the rankings just go in do what you need to do. Focus, because it's a whole different ball game when a championship is on the line. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And, and he got it out of nowhere. Like you know, he wasn't even in the top spot to earn the title. But you know, the the boss Chris Blackheart gave options to our champ. Give it to Carlos Slavin. No. Fight the crazy guy. Yes. And he found a way, and he, and he won. I mean, it is what it is at that point. But sitting at seven, it can go either way. He can either go up or you need to go down. But he, like you said, he has to stay focused. He got to get his mind right. We don't know what goes on in his mind, but he has to try to find an outlet to be. And I'm going to add something, right? As yeah. crazy as he is, right? He was pretty damn smart to, to leave when he's about to get that chair smashed into his throat. Yeah. I mean, All right. That was probably the smartest thing Scott has ever done in his whole career. Yeah, absolutely. All right. He knew he was about to get freaking decapitated by yeah. our champion. I don't know where he is. I mean, it, he's probably I mean, hanging with pickles in the freaking yeah, abyss. Like, I have no clue where but this guy is. I can't even say. I couldn't even disagree. With, I mean, agree with that. Is it wasn't Scott Ladur? It was Annabelle. Yeah, was he possessing? I don't know what it was. Annabelle or Scott? I don't I mean, know. I've stopped trying to figure it out. Brings me back to the whole thing of talking to dolls. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, talking, I, to dolls. I, talking to dolls. I mean, was it really Annabelle? I mean, we, it seemed like it was, but yeah. who, who really knows for sure? Maybe, I mean, maybe his psychiatrist came and got him locked back up. Yeah, mind, we don't know what happened. But there's all about the mind game, so yeah. we never yeah. really know. But you know, going into our eighth ranked competitor is the rising star, the premier, Louis Leon. We say the rising star. But he got shut down. The old Paul Holloway did his job. Uh, he sits at three and three as well. We seen a little run. He was getting some wins. He had some momentum, and now took another loss. And sits him at fifty percent, and he's three and three. He's right at five hundred. Paul, you was in the ring with him. What, what are your words? He's tough. I'll hand it to him. All right, but he wasn't tough enough to beat me. Listen, you can climb as much as you want to try and grab that proverbial brass ring to, to get some success around here but he got a little bit of a taste and he got he got poisoned by it and I said it I said it and I warned him that he was going to try and reach for the stars but those stars were going to be bitter and bite him back and make him fall back down yeah I mean you guys sit at one win apiece one loss apiece you fought him early in our season the first show season of two. season of season three yeah. Season three, no season, season two. two. Season yeah. two, right? You went in there, and you you know you lost, but in the kind words of T.J. Alvin, use it as motivation, and you did. I didn't use the loss as motivation. I'm gonna okay. be perfectly honest with you. Okay. I, I I took that eventual win, yep, that inevitable win, as my motivation. I mean, I, I mean that's that, I mean I can't tell you what what do you think, but T.J. Lewis Leon sitting at number eight. Is that good or good or bad? 
for Lewis to be where he's at, at three and three, ranked eight, I think he could be in a lot better spot. Yeah. Against Paul, it was a great competition. Again, Paul came up with the win. I'll say it right here, congrats on the win. Hopefully, Thank hopefully, Paul, uh, hopefully Lewis Paul takes Harden. the loss as motivation. Yeah. You know, that's all I can really say. I've said it, Lewis is a star on the rise, you know, but for where he's at, I can't say, uh, it's yeah. hard for me to kind it's, of It's tough, it's yeah. But we're gonna go into number nine. Finally, in the top 10 at two and four. I'm, so, I'm sorry, say that again? Finally. Finally in the top, top 10. 10. Finally. At two and four, the all Paul Holloway has done Bask it. Bask in my spotlight, people. Jared, I made every kind of words for this guy right here. I mean, all I gotta say is that I, I'm, 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 I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. I mean, I see the growth every day. I see the growth every time I see him, you know, compete in a match and everything like that. He just gets better with time. It's like, it's like, it's, a fine it's like a fine, yeah, it's exactly. Like fine he took the words wine. right out of my mouth, like a fine wine. He just gets better with time. And I feel Paul, and, and he's sitting right here. I mean, you know, and, and, and I'm not, you know, I'm not kissing his ass by any means. But yeah. what I'm saying is that if he continues to do what he needs to do, Okay. Who, who, who knows? He could he could be in that eventual top five, but he could be in the top three, maybe even the top one. I mean, who knows for sure? He just has to keep keep laser focused, remain, keep keep the momentum, keep the momentum going. Yeah, definitely. I'm not even gonna ask his side of the table what he thinks. <laughs> go ahead. But, go ahead. But I'm gonna ask him how he feels because in the top ten, number ten at one and zero, TJ Alvin. What? <laughs> what? Wait, so, TJ. Whoa, didn't wait, see no, that coming. Wait a minute. So, well, guess what? I'm one above him. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. But who finished 2020 undefeated? Though? That is true. We're going to keep that. Who, who finished 2020 back in the training center? Yeah. Let's keep, let's, let's right. keep ourselves in reality. TJ, right? how do you feel about making the top 10? Uh, I'm shocked. Sorry, I'm okay. No, I mean. I mean one and zero in the top ten, and Paul's two and four above me. I mean, Paul deserves where he's at. Oh, yeah. I deserve where I'm at. I mean, I, I didn't think I was in the top ten, but yeah. alrighty then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Paul. Okay. What do, you, what do you think? You ready to lace the boots back up? You ready to get back in the ring and fight somebody else to get higher up on the rankings? No, I'm I'm more into getting people showcased versus showcasing myself. Okay, so he's content. He's content. He got his taste of victory. He's smart. He's not going after that 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 brass ring. He's not going after that bitter poison success. That shiny pretty penny that could get ripped away from him in, in ten yeah. seconds. But it's okay. Yeah. But guys, that's our top ten rankings for Showcase TV. Uh, when we come back, we're gonna have some good breaking news for you guys out there. Season four Showcase TV. When we come back. I think he's uh, rolling. Uh, he's rolling. And what is going on, you guys and gals? Welcome back to the recap from TJ Alvin here with the breaking news. Now, May 8th, 2021, in Taunton, Massachusetts, in the BFW, we are back live in action for Revival. That's right, we're back live in action. Bell time is at 7.47. That's the breaking news for you. We are excited to be back live in action. But for now, we will bid you adieu. So, for myself, TJ Alvin, alongside with Jay Hollywood, Jared Paulino, and unfortunately, the all Paul Holloway. We will catch you guys next time on Showcase TV and for the Showcase Recap.